So this morning we're breaking down elk and bison, and we're gonna show you our comparison of the two cooked on the grill. But first, our two largest, no, our largest land mammal from North America in the bison, and our second largest deer for North America in the elk. So bison and elk are not as closely related as you think. Bison are in the bovine family, so they're uh, our native beef to this continent. Elk are in the cervid family. That's the deer family. So moose and elk are in the same family. Bison and elk are not in the same family. In fact, elk are more closely related to horses than they are to that buffalo, even though they share the same grassland prairie on the Great Plains. So today, we're gonna cut out a porterhouse steak from an elk, or we're gonna cut out a porterhouse steak from a bison, and we're gonna throw them on the grill, and we're gonna tell you which is better, an elk or a bison. One of the things that's really interesting these, um, they, they both have the triangular stamp on them. Uh, we butchered them here under USDA regulations. The USDA recognizes these two species as exotic. The beef and the pigs that we slaughter are considered domestic. So you, uh, you explain to me how the, uh, the two native species were labeled exotic by the US government. Hmm. Next step, now that we're processing the elk, is I wanna break this loin off. So this is, the, this is the hind. I've already taken the round tip, tri-tip, flank, etc., off of here. But um, I wanna break the sirloin and the short loin portion off of this round. And so we just start right here at this ball joint, make a cut just across like that. Now we grab our hand saw. We take off that whole loin portion. Now what we're going for is those porterhouse steaks. So this portion is gonna be the sirloin and we're talking bone in here, of course. So sirloin, porterhouse and T-bone. But what we're going for is those porterhouse steaks which are in this section right here. We're gonna cut these about an inch and, half, uh, inch and a half or so thick. Let's move to the bandsaw. Start by removing the sirloin. Take a little bit of that tail off. We'll pull the filet out of there, sell a nice, one nice filet. Now we can go in for some beautiful porterhouse steaks. You can see they're going to have a portion of the strip side and a portion of that filet. And that's your porterhouse. Like I mentioned, we're going to cut these nice and thick. Look at those beauties. Let's get our bone scraper, remove some of that bone dust off of there. Get them prettied up. Look at those, look at those beauties. Elk porterhouse steaks. Next step, we gotta get the bison porterhouses cut, and then we'll get them all seasoned up with some Beard of Butcher Blend seasonings. Just have to decide which flavor, and then uh, they're going to the grill. So you saw us cut those elk porterhouse steaks. Now we're going for the bison. We have a bison hindquarter, we're just gonna hit that knuckle right there. And then we're gonna separate this loin from the round. And we're gonna cut you some bison porterhouse steaks, get them on the table next to those elk and see what they look like. Get that loin removed. Now what we want to do is we want to separate the sirloin from the short loin. The 
remove the tail. Square it up a little bit. Want to get these about the same, the same thickness. as the L. Just a dandy, dandy porterhouse. Bison porterhouse steak. Take our scraper and remove some of that bone dust on there. You can see these have a portion of that beautiful strip side and then that tenderloin side. So after we get the bone dust off, we're going to grab, I think these two right here, and we're going to put them up next to the elk. So there you have two elk porterhouse and two bison porterhouse. Next step is to head to the grill get them cooked and see how they do side by side. Meat and spices have gone together for centuries and for over a decade, the bearded butchers have been formulating, blending spices that we started out using in our butcher shop and now we've offered them for sale. 11 different unique blends and two sauces. We sell it in both shaker size and in large four pound bag sizes. We know that these spices are going to be great for not just meats but for anything that you can think to put them around on around your household so please go to www.beardofbutchers.com check out our offerings we're also into many of your retailers nationwide so look for the beard of butcher blend spices on a store shelf near you <music>
grilling these because they're so thick we don't want to burn the outside and have a raw inside so those ready for the grill so the bison porterhouse are larger so i want to be cautious of replacement on the grate. We may have to move things around a little bit as we grill them. As you can see, since those elk are smaller, we're just gonna have to be cautious. Boy, that's a fine looking display. The smell of the beer to butcher blend immediately as it hits the fire. It brings back so many memories. Oh yeah. Time for a little flip in action. Start with the elk. Pro probably gonna be going back and forth quite a bit flipping on these just because they're so thick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. About lost her. Don't want to lose it. It's sticking to the grade a little bit on me. First elk porterhouse is coming off. And we're gonna set it right here and let it rest. Second unseasoned elk porterhouse is coming off. Let that rest. Go for that seasoned, seasoned bison porterhouse. Then the unseasoned bison porterhouse. Let those rest for a little bit. We'll get our squash out. Now the squash. Boy, doesn't that look like a nice fall meal? That looks amazing. Bison porterhouse, bison porterhouse, elk porterhouse, and some butternut squash. Man. Time to get the Montana knife. This is the whole set, but um, we're just gonna get these. This is a chef knife. Um, we're gonna get tenderloin pulled out of these, the strip side pulled out of these, out of each one. These are the unseasoned, uh, these are the seasoned, and we're just gonna give them a sample. And then we're gonna try some of that squash too. What are you thinking, Scott? Do you wanna start with the elk, the unseasoned elk, and then go to the unseasoned bison, and then do the same yeah. thing? I think what's remarkable is to know that this ground that we're standing on is literally the same ground that an elk or a bison natively roamed about 250 years ago and now they're back on our plate one of the largest one of the largest herds of bison was spotted in cincinnati ohio and it was rumored to have said that it was 40 miles long and 40 miles wide well That's now we have herd. elk in kentucky mm -hmm. pennsylvania and michigan too right you ready for this? Yeah, we do. That just looks so, so tender. Go ahead and get yourself a piece. Wow. No seasoning, elk fly. Oh my goodness. Mm. Pure protein. It's got a richness and a tenderness that is just unmatched wow now what i'm curious is how much different this bison tastes compared to that elk you know what i'm curious 
Must have on my neck. <laughs> that's one of those. <laughs> that's one of those fake ladybugs. Look at that. Mm. Oh. It's got a sweetness. A little bit of a different different flavor. So the elk less like beef than the bison is, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. The bison is actually like tastes like a sweet, tender beef. Just like beef elevated. But that tenderness of that elk is just almost unmatched. Look at that. There's the strip. Get yourself a This is of that. the uh, the famous back strap that everybody talks about when it comes to deer or elk. Mmm. You don't even really need to chew, and the juice just It's so juicy. It's it's gonna be hard not to be biased with the bison because we've we've raised bison our whole lives, but um So you might ask the question so good. why elk, why bison? Well one, they're extremely healthy. The meat is much more um, nutrient dense than um, other foods. And then this flavor is wow. just absolutely amazing. I am, they're both absolutely phenomenal. I am noticing a little bit of a difference with the bison and the elk. The two, they do taste a little bit different. I was expecting them more to be similar. more similar, but yeah. You're gonna go in for some squash. I'm just you? wondering, I'm just gonna put a little bit out here so we can, don't have to share the spoon. I mean, we can share the spoon, but. I know we're kind of getting into the next level with the beer to butcher um, seasoning on the rest of these. I'm gonna try the squash. Oh, how's that? This just invokes like an all-American um, native food fall eating the creatures that are native to to where we're at. The squash. Let's do bison seasoned bison. Play first. Oh, this chunk Look of meat that. is going to be absolutely amazing. I already know. Mm. You poor folks. Yeah. Not going to watch us. Plain, plain is good, but that beer to butcher blend seasoning. Was that for me? That's for you. Boy. Give them wow. a look too. Ooh. That is so focus. good. Now let's try the. I've got mm. juice dripping into my hand. Mm. Oh. That seasoning just brings it up a notch. I Some mean, people are like, how come you always put your seasoning on everything? It's because it elevates your, all your food just to another level. It's, it's, it's just so good. That squash, have you had any squash Not yet? Not yet. Oh, that's amazing, so. I think Charlie wants some. I gave him a little bit. Is that the order that goes in? Seth, Scott, Spencer, Charlie? Yep, mm -hmm. sounds good. Mm. Some elk strip. Love it. It's got a little bit of that back fat on there. Mm. I'm just blown away with the tenderness and flavor. Mm. The sweetness of the bison. Mm. Similar, slightly different. I particularly favor the bison just a little bit um however i i feel like both are just absolutely phenomenal wow i'm just gonna put a little chunk of squash on there that how'd i do cooking them perfect it's a little bit harder over you know the open fire especially where you're trying to control your heat so you use the height of your grate and then just moving them around on the grate but um yeah. Wow. Wow, that is so good. I'm going in for what an amazing meal. Bite of squash. So there you have it. We mm. compared two Native American species, two awesome animals, both in their own right deserve mm. high marks. So good. Hope you enjoyed seeing the difference between carcasses, cutting them out, the size and then the flavor comparison. For me, slight edge to the bison, but I feel both of these are absolute top shelf. I would say slight edge to the bison. However, we're going on an elk hunt coming up here in New Mexico. And if you go out and shoot one yourself and then bring it in and cook it and eat it, there's a different type of 
relationship connection. connection with your food so that might change things but uh yeah both of these proteins absolutely phenomenal love the cutout love the thickness of the steak um paired with our butternut squash with cinnamon swirl it's a fall day in ohio and this meal right here is going to be pretty hard to beat so don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms facebook instagram TikTok, youtube subscribe we're at 2.3 million subscribers right here on youtube and until next time see ya